again, here we are again. Yes, you just can't get rid of me, can you? <coughs> oh, gosh, excuse me. <coughs> um, excuse me, excuse me. So good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the something of August 4th or something of August 3rd or 4th of August. I don't know. I'm lost here. Uh, but anyway, I do know that we're in August. And... Um, I'm very excited by the prospect of August because this month I get to see my darling boy, my darling girl, and uh, oh, we're going to have so much, so much, so much, so much fun. Anyway, uh, so yes, what's it, where are we? It is the spirit world sees all. Just think about that. Think about that title. The spirit world sees all. We know, don't we? We know that it does, and. You all know, those of you who know me well, you all know that when I realized how much the spirit world could see, I started using bubble bath in my bath water. And I'm not kidding. Uh, I, it always made me feel better. I don't think it helped. They probably saw just as much as they could without the bubble bath. It just made me feel better, made me feel happier. Of course, now I don't take baths, so there we are. I don't think that the spirit world has any interest in seeing me naked and uh, and um, I'm sure they don't see have any interest in seeing any of us naked. But that does bring up a story. I've forgotten all about that story. But anyway, that's a story for, um, for another time, Chris. Remind me, would you? Uh, that's a story for another time. All right. So before we begin, first of all, I'd like to say can't believe we're talking about seeing naked bodies. Right, before we begin, I'd like first of all to say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who is chuckling away with me. Uh, and I'd like to say good morning to Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. How are you today, Rosemary? I'm good. Well, I know how you are. I know that you've been swimming. I know that you've been meditating. I know that you've been doing all sorts of stuff this morning. So, so how does that make you feel, Chris, being able to climb out of bed and straight into the swimming pool? It makes me feel great. <laughs> good. Well, and good. pampered and lucky. <laughs> pampered, I think, is the word. I think I'm going in the pool later today. I haven't been in the pool for ages. But here in Florida, everyone, you know, it gets to about four or five o'clock in the afternoon and the sky begins to darken just a little bit. And then uh, then you see the thunder and the lightning. And, and then around five or six o'clock, it's always roughly the same time. Around five or six o'clock, it starts to rain. So if you don't nip into the pool before then, you've had it. Because obviously, you know, you can't swim when there's thunder and lightning about. Although I remember an, an amazing, amazing experience I had in a huge swimming pool. Uh, no one was in it. I was by myself. It was a massive, big outdoor swimming pool in Singapore. And um, as I was swimming in the pool, uh, it began to rain heavily. There was no lightning. There was no thunder. So it was fine to be there. And it was one of the best experiences in water that I've ever had because the rain came down really heavily and bounced off the water, which bounced up in my face. And then I was able to lay back and have the rain fall down on me. It was fabulous. It was an absolutely fabulous, fabulous experience. Of course, that was in Singapore a few years ago. Um, anyway, uh, so, well, good. I'm glad you feel pampered, Chris. I'm glad you feel... <coughs> I'm glad you feel lucky, but how about everybody else out there? Are you feeling pampered? Are you feeling lucky? Did you get my newsletter this week? Pretty good newsletter, I thought. What do you think, Chris? Well, I think you have a great message in there that people should pay attention to. Plus, they've been forewarned of your event at the end of the month. And they can get to your um, website with all your events listed there. So that's always a great thing. More, more, more. It is. More, more, and more besides. All right. So, um, yeah. So as you will have read in, in the newsletter this week, um, I think it would be a good opportunity. I'm hoping that you'll join me. Some of you, anyway, will join me 
in understanding and living in the moment this month, taking every single moment that you can, value it, treasure it, and as I said in my newsletter, build memories. Now, you know, so, excuse me, I've got, I've got a cough, I've got a bit of a funny throat, I've got, I don't know what's, I've got an itchy nose, does that mean I'm going to be vexed? Yes, it might mean I'm going to be vexed, but anyway, um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, we all know, don't we, live today, you know, that, that saying, you know, live today as if it is your last, and we all know that. Uh, and But I think that when we're younger, we don't necessarily think that, and uh, we, we're, when we're younger, we don't necessarily think either about the memories, the memories that we have perhaps of our parents or our grandparents, and, or, or, and the memories that we that we ourselves are making every day in some way or another but as we get older uh if, if i were a man i'd have the big long white beard right now i'd be stroking my beard right now as i was talking about getting older i think it is important as we get older to think about um <clears throat> or certainly it is important for me to think about the kinds of things that i might like my daughter and especially my grandson uh to to, to 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 have as memories. I think it's important for me to be able to build memories for them. And I say especially for my grandson because he's of after all the, the newer generation. And um and I think that whereas Samantha has probably trillions of memories. I mean, you know, she was my child. We we grew up. Reese is only nine years old and um don't, I'm hoping that he'll grow into adulthood while I'm still here on this earth. I'm hoping that. But we never know, do we? We never know when God reaches his hand out and and, uh, and literally lifts us out of this world and into the next. And what I would like to do, and I think that as you get older, I think that's, a, that's something that we tend to think about. What I'd like to do is to give him memories. What kind of memories would I like for him to have though that's the thing of course i want him to have memories of the two of us cooking in the kitchen of course i want him to have memories of making the christmas cake but what other memories do i want him to have and i think that we all all of us when we're thinking about our loved ones whether it's our children or our grandchildren whether it's our spouse or whether it's our brothers and sisters or what have you whoever it is that you're thinking of uh, to, to sort of make memories with or to give memories to. There is a difference, I think. Um, I think that, you know, uh, certainly certainly for me, I've been thinking a lot about the kinds of memories that I would like Reese to have. Now, this might sound very weird to some of you, but one of the memories I'm hoping that he will have and... Uh, and I know in a way that he has these memories now of when he was when he was younger and he remembers cuddling up into me and he uh, he remembers when I'm not there. He remembers my smell. Sometimes he'll say to his mom, I mean, I just smell mosey. That doesn't mean I've got an awful smell, by the way. Uh, but we all of us have a certain smell or a certain texture. We all of us have a certain, I don't know, let's say aura or type of energy. And my grandson being very sensitive and very aware will often, even when I'm not there, he will know if I'm upset or when he calls me, sometimes he'll look at me and he'll say, Mosey, have you been crying? Have you been crying, Mosey? And there's no reason for him to suppose that I might have been crying. But it could be simply that I just watched a really sad movie or I heard a sad story. It could be that I've been affected during the day by uh, by um, maybe a consultation that I had or a particularly sad situation that I've come across. Uh, but my grandson seems to be able to tune into those things. But let's get back to memories because I suppose what I the memories that I would like for Reese to have when I'm gone, when I'm all, you know, when I'm when he's older, as he looks back on his childhood, the memories that I would like him to to retain 
uh, about me and about us, the two of us. Of course, I, I want him to remember the fun that we had. I want him to remember the reading. I want him to remember the music. I want him to remember how I helped to teach him to play the piano. I want him to remember all of those things. But I think most importantly, I want him to remember um, the feel of me, the sense of me, the awareness of me as a person and as a person in his life. Um, you know how, if I can explain this, you know how sometimes when you're thinking of someone and there is, you, know, you sort of you remember something that you did together or you have a memory of a person and you feel sort of that warmth uh, that comes over you or you, you remember something and you just find yourself um, with that slow smile on your face, you know, that, that because the memory has touched some part of you. And I suppose the memories that I want my grandson to have of me are those moments, those times when he, when we connected and when I touched, not only touched his heart, but touched his soul as well. Am I expecting too much? What do you think? What do you all think? We'd love to know what it is that you all think. Uh, but I think that, you know, as we get older, those those um, needs, those wants, those wishes that we leave something behind us, uh, some memory of us. You know, I've always thought that, uh, you know, I would like to leave my stamp on the world, let's say, a little footprint so that people can look and say, oh, yes, Rosemary was here. Oh, yeah. Or even if it's, oh, do you remember that woman? You know, uh, uh, sometimes we do that with movie stars, don't we? You remember that guy? What was his name? What's his name? And I don't, I'm not worried that people are going to forget my name. I don't care about that. But it's nice if you can, as you go along in life, it's nice if you can do something or be that kind of person that reaches out, that touches other people's hearts so that they will remember, even if they don't remember your name, they will remember the feeling that you gave them or they remember some awareness of you in, at some point in, in life. And most of us can't do that as far as the world is concerned. You know, we look at all of the greats. Uh, Winston Churchill comes to mind just off the top of my head, even Maggie Thatcher, who I love, Maggie Thatcher. Uh, you know, those kinds of people, um, of course, I do remember their names, but, you know, those people, great, the greats of our world, even back into the early, early, you know, days, um, I mean, I was just reading earlier about, earlier about Queen Elizabeth I and and then James, who who uh, was her successor or whatever it is they call, and I, and I'm thinking, you know, I can't. I'm just one little person. We're all of us. We're just, you know, just little people in this world. So it's not that we want the world to remember us. It's not that I personally want to do something in this world where people all over the world will remember me or remember my name, but. I would like my family, my friends, I would like them to have those memories and to retain those memories that, uh, that um, you know, that we can give to them. Uh, let me know what you think. Even if we can't do it for the world, we can do it for our families, can't we? And my intention in August is to live every moment, uh, treasure every moment, uh, make sure each moment is an important one, um, and, uh, of course, this really, even though I'm doing it now, yes, it's August, and I try to do it, you know, I've done it, sort of, we don't need a month, but August, maybe we should think about it. August is maybe that moment, that month where we should really work hard at trying to do that. And, of course, I shall be in New York on the 10th of August when I'm really, really, really going to start. But I've already started now by talking to Reese and talking about the things that we might do and the things that we might do in the future. Building memories for our loved ones. I would love for Reese when he's 40 or 50 or however old he gets to, uh, I would love for him to be able to, at some point, not all the time, but every now and again, uh, just have a little memory of his Mosey. 
and um, and how I felt and how I made him feel and how the energy between us was so beautiful. And wouldn't that be nice to think that in 50 years' time my grandson still not just remembers me as a vague memory but still has some connection that when he thinks of me, he smiles. All right, Chris, uh, enough of this waxing on stuff. Uh, let's see, do we have, is there, is there anybody there or have I been chatting away to myself for the last 10 minutes? Oh, yeah, everybody's here. They're quite active in the chat room. But what you were just talking about reminds me of um, something Maya Angelou had said, which was, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And there's no doubt in my mind, Rosemary, with all the shows you've made, all the live events you've, uh, I can't see Ben at because you're the headliner, but all the live events you had, uh, television shows, your books, your CDs, there's no doubt you're going to leave a big imprint in making people feel a certain way. So don't doubt that one. Well, that it's a, thank you for saying that. And, you know, um, I mean, I'm, I'm aware that, um, very, very aware that what I do, it, and I say this all the time, what I do touches people's hearts and changes people's lives very often. I mean, I'm fully aware of that. Um, and um, it doesn't matter if uh, people don't remember my name because, as you just said, my Angelou said, yeah, it's uh, the it's the way you feel. But I am more concerned this August and focus very much so this this month, especially as I'm spending it with my daughter and my grandson. I'm very focused on not just giving that feeling to the world because you know. You know, it's so easy to smile at strangers. It's so easy to be nice to people that you don't know that well. It really is because you don't have to deal with them on a daily basis. It's so easy, you know, to be friendly uh, and to put on a face when you're out. It is not so easy always. Uh, when people know you really well, you know they, you know that old saying. No, you never know what happens when somebody closes the door. Nobody knows what happens behind that closed door, except the people behind that closed door. And I think it's so easy for us to be <laughs> to be nice to people who don't matter to us so much, and not so easy to to remember that the people who matter to us are the people that we should be trying the hardest with, to be the most respectful to to treat with the most respect and to treat with the most care and the most understanding. And I think that, um, you know, it, 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 I appreciate what you're saying. It's, it, and, I, and I'm fully aware that for the last not many years, all of those hundreds of years now, uh, um, I'm fully aware of the effect that I have and what I do and uh, when I say I, I'm talking about Grey Eagle and I, I'm fully aware of the effect uh, that uh, we have when we make a connection with someone's loved ones, when we make a connection, uh, you know, when you hold someone's hand. Um, when, when I hold someone's hand, it's different than somebody else holding somebody's hand because when I hold someone's hand, I'm giving them healing. I'm giving them my, a, a piece of me. It's it, that's an easy thing to do because I have their loved ones in the spirit world who are helping me to do that. I'm not doing that alone. I'm not doing that by myself. But behind closed doors, when you are tired or when you're frustrated or when things aren't quite going the way that you want them to go, it's then easy to snap at the you know we always hurt the ones we love. There, that, there's that song who I can't remember now who it was by, but anyway, great song. And it is so true that we, you know, behind closed doors, we're tired. We get, sometimes we get snappy. Sometimes, you know, we we don't treat the people who, uh, who are close to us with the respect that they deserve more than anyone else in our lives. And, and I think that, you know, we should focus on our being, being 
uh, respectful and being kind and and you know being understanding to people who who um, have always supported us or are supporting us, our friends, our family, uh, those people, and for, especially for me, uh, my daughter and my grandson right now because you know I mean. It's so easy for me when I'm tired or frustrated to sort of, you know, not be so patient with my daughter as I would perhaps be with anybody else, uh, you know. And and boy, she uses me as a whipping post from time to time. Fully aware of that too. We, you know, familiarity. It doesn't necessarily breed contempt. I wouldn't use the word contempt, but it's so easy to sort of, you know, to sort of when you relax and you're not having to put a face on anymore and you're not having to be up front and on the ball and, and, and doing your job or what have you. It's so easy to go home and then take it out on the people who you love the most and who love you the most. So th this month, I think, you know, especially as I'm going to be putting myself in that environment with my daughter and my grandson. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not making it sound as if, when I'm usually when I'm with them, we're all mean to each other because we're actually not. We have a lot of fun together, and um, we respect each other and we care about each other. But I just would like to see every one of us making just a bit more effort. Me especially, uh, a bit more effort, living in the moment and appreciating the moments that we have with people who we love the most, who we're the closest to. And I think that you know if. Uh, if, I'd love to hear what everybody else has to say about that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done now. Chris, go for it. All right. So Carolyn said, yes, it was a lovely newsletter. And I love the wonderful gifts of memory you always give your grandson. <laughs> yeah, me too. But let's see. Judith says, I am old enough to think of those things, memories and legacy. Yes, I actually have a, it's funny you should mention legacy. I actually have a, a very close friend of mine. Um, uh, his uh, his uh, father and then, his, and then after that, his mother and his family became uh, very famous, um, are very famous actually, are very, very well known. Um, but the father particularly, uh, did something that was so great and left an, an, an amazing legacy to his five children. And his wife, who um, uh, came after him, uh, took over the reins when he passed, uh, uh, and she built something that was phenomenal. Uh, and they left this amazing legacy uh, for their children. Now, um, you know, we can't necessarily leave... A legacy of an empire we can't leave the legacy of a you know of a of a huge business but our legacy uh, should be the legacy the thing that we leave to our kids that are the most important things i think you know it's, of course i'm going to sound really you know a bit soppy when i say this but the legacy of kindness the legacy of of hope the, the being able to hope the legacy of hard work and so on and so forth all of those things are a great legacy but a friend of mine uh had just has just um, this friend whose father left a legacy has now uh, created in his own right all by himself um uh, he had lots of support from different people he'd be the first one to say that to you but boy he's left a legacy for his two boys which is astounding which is stunning it's a stunning legacy it's something that he built up pretty much from scratch uh, we'd all like to leave legacies and i think thinking about this during this august time uh, it's you know what legacy are we leaving and don't don't get muddled here thinking that i'm talking about money or finances not talking about that at all um there's a, there's a, a great comedian whose name I also forget, uh, uh, talking about his mother. Uh, he, this guy's Irish and his mother was Irish. And she, uh, you know, was, um, first of all, she was a nun. Then she went into parliament. And uh, the legacy, he was talking about the legacy that she left to him and to his siblings 
which was not that she was a, a great parliamentary person. It was not that she was a nun. It was that she was simply um, a person who taught them, if you want something badly enough, go for it. If you fail, you fail, but go for it. And uh, and her legacy to, to her children was uh, don't let fear stop you. And we can all say that to our kids, but if we don't show it, if we don't you know, live that, if we don't live what we talk about, if we don't live what we say, then that's not a legacy, that's just words. So, you know, thinking about what we leave for our children and our grandchildren, I think, is another thing that I'm going to be doing this August. All right. This is from Cheryl saying, my best memories of my loved ones are just time spent together. I wish I had kept in touch with them, but was caught up in my own internal issues. But the love continues on. It really does. It really, really does. And, uh, you know, the, the when I was, I remember when I was uh, pregnant, and uh, of course I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. I was on nine month bed rest. Some of you have heard me say that before. So it gave me a lot of time to think. And the, the one thing that uh, worried me was that I did not want to be my mother. I didn't want to be a mother like my mother was to me. Um, I wanted to absolutely give. As a mother, I wanted to give this child in my tummy uh, something special, something, you know. And I remember having conversations with uh, with um, Gregel at the time. I remember having conversations with God at the time. I remember getting quite worried, uh, you know. And I remember, I mean, I didn't know Gregel at the time. So I didn't know that it was him at the time, but I knew it was someone. I remember having these long conversations and worrying and worrying about what it was that I could give to my child so that so that you know something from me to my child that I had never had from my mother that would make me different uh, and better nicer than than my mother was to me and uh, it came to me one uh, one day while uh, I, I felt my daughter kicking uh, and um, across my mind that the only thing that I could give her of any real value was the knowledge that she was well loved not to love her which of course I did already uh, not to, to give her lots of love and kisses every day every single way uh, not that but I'm talking about the knowledge the surety the certainty that she would never ever doubt that that uh, she was well loved, even if it was only by me. And I think that that is truly the the one thing of real value that we can give to our children, and uh, that just gives them the knowledge, so that uh, they can doubt anyone and everyone else, but they never doubt your love for them. And that's a huge thing. And I think, you know, I grew up not no well actually knowing that my mother didn't actually love me um uh, not sure if my father loved me or not so lots of doubts there um and when as children as you're growing up uh, if you doubt that you are loved if you doubt that uh, you know that people sort of see you see you as 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 beautiful or nice or whatever if you doubt that you are the most loved in the family or equally loved in the family. Those doubts will eat you away. They will, you know, it's like the poison, the tiny drops of poison that uh, grown-ups give to us children when we, as we're growing up, those doubts, those uncertainties, those insecurities. So I came to the conclusion with my child in my tummy uh, that uh, the only thing of real value that I could really ever give to her was the absolute knowledge that she is well loved and she knows that she is. And of course, my grandson has that absolutely absolute knowledge. No doubts, no insecurities, no worries whatsoever. He absolutely knows that he is well loved. Chris. Mary says, I'm going to try to be a better me and live more in the moment with my kids and husband. Yes. Thank you for all of your healing and the best advice. Does Gray Eagle have any messages for me 
love always. Well, actually, you took the words out of my mouth there. Love always. Always give love. Uh, don't be afraid. I think that sometimes you perhaps shy away from giving love, perhaps a little bit of fear of rejection there. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you never dare uh, to be who you are, if you never dare to trust other people, then you're going to lose out. So even, you know, sometimes even though the fear of reje rejection is great, just go out there and put your teeth in. You can do it. You can do it. And so, you know, just if, if you can't show, that, show your love for others, don't expect them to show their love for you. It's very difficult, isn't it? If you're not getting, you know, sooner or later, you can show as much love as you want. But if it's not reciprocal, that's tough. You know, it's, then it becomes really tough to do it. So just dare to be yourself. Rhonda says, I'm so fortunate to have so many memories with my dad. I took my mom and dad with me on almost all my vacations. Oh, we hiked nice. together. We had many picnics, such great memories of love and happiness. Oh, that's so nice. I like that. Allie Gosh. says, go ahead. Allie says, wow, this resonates being unlike my mother. Well, you know, that's not point the finger at our mothers. Be careful to do that because we don't know what they had to put up with. We don't know how their life was. Um, I was actually talking to Chris the other night and, uh, I have um, a couple of really very fond memories of my father. It's perhaps not saying a lot in a lifetime when I say a couple of fond memories, but I can remember very, very clearly uh, two instances. One when I was probably six or seven years old and another uh, when my hamster died <laughs> i know um actually there are three special special instances where my father uh, what became of my father if that makes any sense to anyone the ones when he sat by my bedside and held my hand and told me how brave i was through, during a thunderstorm and he taught me to be how to be unafraid of thunderstorms um Another, when my hamster died, and for the very, very first time, and I would be 14 or 15 at the time, was the first time I remember ever sitting on my father's knee. And can you imagine that you get to, I'm thinking about this, can you imagine that you get to 15 years old and you've never sat on your father's knee? Uh, but that was a good memory. And then when my uh, a brother, my oldest brother, was missing in Africa and uh, uh, he, t he turned up one day and everyone went down the pub and, my, and I, was, I was actually working. My dad, who loved the pub, <laughs> decided to wait for me. So even though, you know, we'd, nobody had ever mentioned it in the house, we never talked about it, everybody was wondering you know, is he dead, is he alive, etc. This is my brother. Uh, and my father decided that he would wait for me to come home. Now, that, just the act of knowing that I would need someone uh, was, uh, was amazing to me. And um, I remember sort of walking in, my brother's kit bag was on the floor and uh, my dad was sitting in the chair and tears started to fall and my dad put his arms out and I without hesitation went straight to him I was uh, 16 or 17 at the time and I remember I sat on his knee and he held me for a long time and then I started to talk and I was saying how much I'd prayed and prayed and prayed that my brother would be safe and um, I can't believe it can you still hear him Chris Yes. Okay, I've got, I've lost you. Have you lost me? Not Did you that lose I'm aware me? of. Okay, wait a minute here because I've lost you guys. Hold on. There we go. 
uh, and um, and I was talking to my dad, and I was of course crying and happy and and saying, you know, that I prayed and prayed and prayed that my brother would be safe. And my father, who uh, was very verbal about not believing in God and that there was no God, because he'd seen my father was an army man all of his life, and he'd seen some terrible things during the war and when he was out you know he was in hong kong he was in china he was in uh, uh, india he was uh, he'd seen some terrible things and so he would say oh, if there was a god these things wouldn't happen and so on but as i sat on his knee my 17 year old self crying and and happy that my brother was home and, and sort of trying to figure out all these emotions my my father uh, said to me quietly he said well, don't tell anyone. Don't want to tell anyone about this. And here I am telling all of you, don't tell anyone, but I prayed too. And, uh, you know, these moments, my father was not a demonstrative person. He was not an affectionate person in any way, shape or form, although was he, but had suppressed it. So please, all of you out there, who you know find difficulty showing your love don't don't suppress don't suppress your love don't suppress your feelings let people know how you feel because it's only then that you get the reward you reap the rewards uh if some people uh you know deny you fine but so many people will welcome you and welcome your love and welcome your your sharing of your heart with open arms chris Pamela says, thank you for your wise and wonderful insights. It made me think of my dad, who always had a saying or a funny poem or a story. When I was younger, I usually did the eye roll thing. But now I'm <laughs> glad to remember his presence and words. Can Great Eagle ask my dad, does he have any other good words? Um, just, you know, when... when, when not doing that right now and i do appreciate why you're asking keep asking never be afraid to keep asking everyone but uh at this moment in time gregor is saying love and just lots and lots of love okay keep going chris lorraine says that is so important knowing you are loved from parents i often doubted that my dad loved me he was so loving to my older and younger sisters and i never knew why seeds of poison and yes i have found memories of him but didn't feel the love oh well, i feel you know I, I i you know what you're saying resonates with me so much because my mother was the same and had it not been for those moments those three moments that i told you about and there are one or two other moments with my father but had it not been for those moments that I can look back on memories, as we're saying, uh, I would have doubted also, I would have doubted my father's love for me, but I don't, I know that my father loves me. I don't doubt that he loved me. Uh, I know that he could not show his love, especially to me, because uh, um, as I learned, um, I was apparently, you would have never known it, but I was apparently his favorite the one that the pretty one the one he worried about the most and the one he felt the need to be toughest on because he thought that I was the most sensitive and the most vulnerable um and so you know I I feel when you're telling me that story you know my heart goes out to you but see uh even if we don't have the love of our parents I'm hoping 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 that you found the love of someone uh, even if it's only your kids or or your cats, or your dogs, or whoever. We'd love to know who in who in this world loves you. All right, um, Marlo says my mother sometimes sad. Hmm. My mother's sometimes sad that she thinks she has taken the wrong child at the hospital as a baby because oh. <laughs> I have many problems as a baby. I have learned from it. I never say such a thing to my own child. Never. Oh, dear. Um, your mother sounds as if she had many, many emotional issues. 
And sadly, you know, it's so sad, isn't it, that our parents often put their issues onto us. They lay them right at our doorstep. And this is why as we grow up, you know, we, 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 have, we sort of have a lack of confidence or we, you know, we're not as strong or strong minded as we, as we feel that we could be uh, seeds of doubt, seeds of poison, um, you know, and they, they, they can damage us. But um, as we show in our bottom brick exercise, maybe you're, maybe you're a good candidate for the bottom brick. Uh, and please, if anybody wants to be a bottom bricker, um, all you have to do is email Chris, K-R-I-S at rosemaryontair.com. I can't remember that, just rosemary at rosemaryontair.com. It'll get, it'll get to Chris anyway. But if you want to be a bottom bricker, and as we're talking about this, and we're talking about the effects that, <coughs> excuse me, the effects that our parents uh, have had on us and, uh, you know, those little drops of poison as, as kids, we don't even know that they are little drops of poison. They just... We just know how they make us feel, and they make us feel horrible. They make make us feel less, uh, and the effect can be so far reaching. And even as adults, and even as you know, even into our fifties and sixties, or even later in our lives, if we don't address these issues, if we don't know how to address these issues, um, you know, they can it can it can spoil what could have been a, a wonderful and a positive life uh, if we let those drops of poison uh, poison us, if we let that bottom brick hold us down instead of allowing us to fly. All right. Um, Lisa says, I visited my COVID isolated mom for her 79th birthday yesterday. Oh, nice. Happy birthday um, to you, buddy. So trying to stay six feet apart, she snuck in a hug. I gave her a fourth generation pillow of a picture taken a month ago. Mom said my sis and I with our daughters, with their daughters. I felt so much love that I cried. Mom and I haven't seen eye to eye in a long time. She is slowly experiencing dementia. My heart is breaking. Memories are very important and urgent. Well, I know that, you know, I know how sad it is when we see someone we love with them going, sort of going down that track and uh, becoming in some ways less and less who they've always been. Um, but I want you to focus, let's all of us, you know, focus on the joys, on the happinesses. I'm so uh tired i think i said this uh, a week or two ago on one of our shows you know the world is you know in a state at the moment everything is awful right now and and on and on and some lovely lady was saying uh you know this oh gosh and uh you know this is happening and that's happening and and, I, and i'm thinking <laughs> you got you got to stop 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 now because yes Awful things are happening in this world. But I have news for all of you. Awful things have been happening in this world since time began, since this world was created. There have been conflicts. There have been wars. There have been people fighting each other. There have been tribe, tribal wars and then war, you know, wars with, within countries. And, and there, there's been disease and there's been famine and awful. Do you want me to go on? And on and on. It's been going on forever. And what I would like to do is, yes, please, let's acknowledge the awful stuff because we need to acknowledge it in order to try to make it better, don't we? But can we also acknowledge the wonderful, wonderful things that are going on in the world? Imagine that the sun rises every morning, gives us an opportunity to see, to be, to, to, to see daylight. Um, you know, the majority of us, we have food to eat. And for those who don't have food, there are food banks. And for those who can't reach the food banks, we have we have so many things in place. We can't feed all of the starving of the world, but we're not doing a bad job. Uh, there are so many things that are great. We have medicines. 
We share medicines with third world countries. We have fabulous doctors who go out to third world countries and give of their expertise for free. We have medicines that, you know, if, you, if, I, if I've got a cough or a cold, I can go straight to the doctor. And as I do that, actually, I'm, not, I'm averse to doctors, really, in so many ways. Uh, I don't take any medications of any kind. And aren't I lucky that I don't need to? There's a good thing. You see, there's another good thing about my life that I should be celebrating. I think we should start to look at the things that in our lives that, yes, we acknowledge all the other stuff. And we acknowledge this wonderful lady and having to visit her mother with COVID. And how nice. I love your mother that she's snuck in a hug. I think that's great. I love that. Uh, and it's awful. We have awful things to deal with. We have awful things to put up with. Um we have awful sadnesses. There are lots of tears and pain and sorrow in this world of ours. But there's also such joy and such beauty. The hug from your mum must have been the highlight of your day, if not the highlight of your month or year or maybe even the highlight of your life. Um, you know, uh, so we have to appreciate all the good stuff as well as all the bad stuff. Chris. Well, you've been saying for as long as I've known you, where your attention goes, your energy flows. Yes, that, that's right. And if your attention is focused on all of the awful stuff, if your focus, you know, is fixed on the bad stuff, then you will, your energy will go down that road and you'll become depressed, you'll be unhappy and so on. I'm not suggesting we live in, in Wonderland and let's pretend nothing bad is happening. Of course, we don't want that either. We have to be realistic. But in every day in every way, when you put your head on that pillow at night, if you can think of just two or three things that you smiled about in the day, that made you feel good in the day, that were the happy things, good things. I speak to my grandson. He calls me every night. and. Uh, some of the stuff that we talk about is ridiculous, ridiculous. But, uh, you know, Chris said the other day she was sort of, she was there at one point and she said to me, I didn't realize he's such a little chatterbox. Well, he is a chatterbox. He's a chatterbox to me and he's a chatterbox to his mum. But when he meets new people, he's not a chatterbox at all because he's very shy. But uh, that is the highlight of my day. It makes me smile. And so, I can be sad because I've just been talking to someone who who uh, lost their child. I can be talking to someone who is sick. I can be talking to someone who's sort of going through an awful divorce or whatever it is. Yes, and I can feel for those people. And, you know, I can understand the sadnesses that are in this world. But, gosh, I can't imagine a life where I couldn't smile about something. One thing at least in a day. And I smile, if it weren't for my grandson, before my grandson, I would be smiling at uh, my daughter or I'd be smiling at the flowers in the garden. I went out the other day and uh, I have these beautiful gardenia bushes and those of you who've been keeping up with me, you'll know we had massive, uh, massive blossoms on my gardenia bushes. They were fabulous. They were glorious. And they're, as far as I'm aware, spring flowering. I went out the other day, a couple of days ago, looking at this card, one particular gardenia bush, and it's filled with buds. So who knows? We're going to get flowers, gardenia flowers, in the summertime as well as in the springtime. Doesn't that make you smile? You've got to find things that make you smile. Andrew says, I have purposefully become more tactile and demonstrably loving since Good. my wife Gina died. For Good. my two kids, whereas before I was more laid back. Andrew, I'm with you. Got to be tactile. You've got to be. Uh, this morning, my grandson called. They, he, he was he's away with his mom at the moment. They're visiting friends, and uh, they're sitting in a, a, a restaurant. And he's sort of looking down. He's chatting away to me, but he's looking down. And he's looking around, and so on. And I said to him. Let me see that beautiful face. I want to see that beautiful face. And he looked up at me and he smiled his smile at me. And I said, there you go. Um, 
I'm happy now. Uh, and uh, we can talk later, okay? And he sort of said, yes, I have to go now because I have to eat breakfast and I'm having waffles. And uh, But don't ever be afraid to tell your children how beautiful they are. Don't ever be afraid to tell your children or your grandchildren, look at me. Hey, look at me. Let me see those beautiful eyes. Let me see that pretty face of yours. Just don't ever be afraid to show your affection, especially to those you love the most. Mark says, if I had held on to the crazy health events that I have encountered since 2019, from cancer to C. diff to heart surgery to a broken molar surgery, I'd be in a funny farm or a loony <laughs> bin. I just took all that has happened as strength builders. I realized how strong I was in the face of defiance. I smile. I'm happy inside. My soul knows peace, inner peace. I've learned a great deal through your beloved help and of great eagle. Hopefully I'll see you next summer. We hope so. Come on, you know, get let's get together here. We have to get together. Mark, I'm so proud of you because, you know, uh, to take adversity and turn it around and and see it as a, a lesson and see it as a lesson that you, you're going to complete this lesson. You're going to, you know, you're going to you're going to battle through this and come out the other side. I'm so proud of you that that's exactly what you're doing. Ali says, I'm in a major life transformation, but I don't know where I'm supposed to be or how to get there heavily into astrology and spiritualism, but I don't think that I'm living in the right place. Where am I supposed to be to start living my soul's purpose? Oh, it sounds to me as if you might bend from a good conscience, from somebody who's really, really good. Um, you need, um, I mean, if you're into astrology, that can help tremendously. Um, if you're on the, the verge of or the cusp of new beginnings, new life, I, I always find it very helpful to, you know, um, to offer people to consult someone like me, for instance. Um, so sometimes, you know, we need to go through sort of um, that awful transition, uh, you know, this, this, the, the everything as you know it is gone. You, you left wondering where am I supposed to go now? What am I supposed to do now? And completely befuddled as to what your next step should be. And all I can tell you is if you were to find a really good medium who was able to talk to your loved ones in the spirit world, they would have some good advice and good help for you. Chris. Marlo says, I read soul signs last week. Oh, wow. Oh, last week you read the whole book. <laughs> I can use it very well in my work. Yes. I, I have many experiences and signs from heaven, but I always have doubts. It's very irritating. Is that <laughs> because I'm a water sign? <laughs> oh, gosh. You said it. <laughs> well, you know, look, I have to tell you that Water signs are my most compatible. I'm a I'm an earth sign, so water signs are my most compatible um, energy. You know, where water feeds uh, earth. Earth uh, gives uh, water a place to be. Um, so you know, but I have friends who uh, who are water signs because I'm an earth sign. I usually, it'll take me a while to think things through. It'll take me a while to sort of assess different situations. But once I've made up my mind or once I've made a decision, I'm going for it. That's it. This is what I'm going to do. Um, water signs are so very different and lovely. Uh, but, um, you know, it's so should I do this? Or well, maybe I should do this. Shall I flow this way? Remember your water. Shall I flow this way? Or shall I flow that way? Think about a river. 
okay sometimes the river sometimes the terrain that the river runs through forces the river to go this way but occasionally water has its own choice and can go this way or this way and very often it'll split in two because it can't make up its mind should i go left or should i go right water signs are known for when for instance decorating shall i have the green tile or should i go with the blue tile or should i no no I'll go with the blue no maybe the green whereas earth signs me i said for goodness sake make up your mind <laughs> i would never have that situation because i'm an earth sign and i'm much more decisive don't don't put yourself down my darling because you're a water sign because water signs are lovely but uh, yes, uh, sometimes that indecisiveness is uh, is due to your the type of energy that you are. Uh, once you understand it, give yourself a break. Don't give yourself a hard time over it. It's uh, hey, I'm a water sign. What can I do? This is who I am. Rosemary, we're coming up to time. I yep. can give you one more question, and then maybe we can talk about your upcoming event. Okay. So Violet's asking a uh, question about the stigmata, people receiving the wounds of Christ. What is your take on this? Well, um, I've, I've read, gosh, over the years, I'm trying to think now what I have re read about, but I I'm, I'm think I'm just going to go off the cuff and I'm going to be listening to Grey Eagle as well because I think that um, for those who don't know about the stigmata the, it's um basically put it in a nutshell forgive me violet i'm going to just trim it right down uh into this little tiny nutshell and by the way thank you for uh putting that stuff on wherever you put it was it on instagram or was it on facebook or whatever it was I instagram it. rosemary altea fans instagram That's, thank you so so much for that but anyway uh so coming back to the stigmata um this is very often stigmata shows itself in you know but perhaps uh, let's let me give an example of someone who's um who's uh, maybe kneeling at a cross talking to god talking to christ or what have you and uh, they will start to bleed sometimes from the hands sometimes from the on the feet and it's it's supposed the idea is supposed to be that you're bleeding from the uh, where christ was nailed to the cross and um and it's a it's often a sign that the person who is experiencing this or experiencing this bleeding very often unaware of what's happening to them uh it is a sign uh the church takes it as a sign very often but this person has the let's say has the ear of god or has you know or is somehow is spiritually connected with uh with god or with that god force There's lots of different takes on it i'm bungling this i know violet i'm not doing a great job with this but actually i think that um i let's say i believe that this can happen and i believe that it does happen from time to time i don't know that it happens very often it is a phenomenon uh, and i believe that very often that person who is praying or who's connecting to christ who or who is somehow uh, tuning in or within christ's energy i believe that you can be so close to a person that you can actually experience what they're experiencing you can feel what they are feeling and sometimes you can feel uh sometimes the experiences that they had and it it will sometimes manifest itself in a physical way i, I know that when i talk to people in the spirit world i will occasionally thank goodness it doesn't happen as often as it used to but i would occasionally if somebody was describing for instance that they had uh, throat cancer prior to them passing they would the be best way i can put it is let's say they put that condition onto me or they they their energy they they're so intent on me on me knowing what it is that they are trying to say to me that they don't realize but they are their energy is such that i am feeling what they felt 
and even gagging and some occasionally throwing up or uh, as if somebody's describing an injury uh, I will feel that injury to the point of real pain so you know I think that the stigmata is just a, the next step away from that and I and I do think that it does happen has that have I made that clear or did I confuse everybody with that? I'm not really sure, but yeah. No, I think uh, that's quite clear, Rosemary. Okay. Um, but, you know, I I don't know if Violet has an opinion on, stig on stigmata or she just wanted to hear my opinion. Um, but, uh, you know, Violet, we can get together and talk about it. Uh, we can definitely have, it sounds to me like it might be a really great discussion. And uh, maybe if uh, Violet is free, maybe either tonight or tomorrow night, maybe we could talk about it. And uh, even Violet, how do you feel about coming on with us and doing an off-the-cuff? Uh, if anybody else would like to join in with that or give an opinion about the that kind of phenomenon, hey, we'd be happy to do that. What do you think, Chris? I think that might be a good one. Violet says it's fascinating. Thank you and cool. And absolutely. You know, I'll be in on anything you want to do. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, you know, if we do it tonight or we do it tomorrow, we'll let you guys know. So watch out for you. You know, if you if you're not subscribed, we can't let you know. But if you subscribe and it really doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, you go hit that subscribe button. When we're doing something, you know, we'll we'll sort of put it out there and let you know that what we're doing. So maybe we'll do that either today or tomorrow. Uh, I'll chat with Chris about it uh, and we'll chat with Violet and see see what we can come up with. It's a fascinating subject, don't you think? Fascinating. There are so many odd phenomena that happen that, uh, that we either don't talk about or we feel a bit silly to talk about it because maybe we think that, uh, you know, the people think we're crazy. But everybody knows I'm a little bit crazy, so I don't mind talking about these things one little bit. Right. All right, my darlings. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining us this morning. Once again, it sort of goes goes fast, isn't it? That hour just whizzes by. I'd like to say thank you to Chris uh, once again for doing a great job. Um, and um, to all of you out there, we love having your comments. We love having these discussions. And we'll maybe see you later tonight if you feel like it <coughs> or tomorrow. We'll let you know. In the meantime, a special thanks, you know, to Regal, because without him, we couldn't do this. Uh, and um, uh, until I see you again, we're definitely doing Saturday morning story time. I think I gave an indication of what the story would be this next week. So definitely got a good story for you this Saturday morning at uh, 11 a.m. Wherever you found me today, you'll find me there on Saturday. Uh, and... Um, We'll probably be doing an off-the-cuff, and uh, those of you who didn't have the newsletter and you heard me talk about it and you're saying, what, what's it, what, what? Uh, you have to subscribe to get the newsletter, but we send out a newsletter once a month, and I promise you we will not inundate you. Don't forget, please don't forget, we are in Connecticut on August the 27th. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm very excited about it. One-on-one, -on -one, you know. Hugging, kissing, cuddling. Oh, oh, wait, no, that's not what I'm going for. Um, well, I'll be there talking to you about how to raise your level of consciousness, how to become more sensitive, how to become more aware. And, of course, yes, as you all want to know, um, messages from the spirit world. Of course, we're going to be doing those as well. So Saturday morning, the 27th of August, that's in about three weeks' time or yeah, just imagine, just, just over three weeks' time. If you want to know more, go to my website, rosemaryontair.com. Uh, I think Chris did put up the, uh, the, the whatever link it was, but if you missed it, go to the website, rosemaryontair.com. You can see everything that we're doing, all about what we're up to. So until I see you all again, please, please, please have a very blessed rest of the day, everybody, and have a very, very blessed weekend.